Number 10. The Landsort Artillery Battery During the infamous extended conflict known as the Cold War, countries near the Soviet Union had to have outposts to give them an early warning in case of a surprise attack. That's what's here in the now-abandoned Landsort Artillery Battery on the southern Swedish island of Oya, originally designed to defend the shoreline against possible naval activity from the Soviet Union. There was a strategic location the country could use to defend the shore from Baltic Sea attacks, and it was necessary because they feared an invasion by the Russians was imminent. Many of the old defenses were replaced by new artillery batteries like this one, which also happens to be the one and only standing today. Back when it was built, it was one of the most advanced artillery systems on the globe. The cannon could fire with outstanding precision, with the gun itself protected by a huge dome and the operating facility hidden inside of a rock. The artillery battery was designed to withstand all attacks, including chemical, nuclear, and even biological. In the event of World War III, this artillery battery might have become one of the most crucial lines of defense and one of the most important naval passages in the world. Fortunately, it was never used, but you can still see the remnants today. The artillery battery guarded Sweden until the turn of the century, at which time these stations were decommissioned and dismantled except for one. It's now an overgrown ruin and a reminder of just how cold the Cold War really was. Number 9. Chapel of Our Lady of Victories The Chapel of Our Lady of Victories in Portugal is one of the creepiest abandoned churches in the world, and yet it has a rather romantic story behind its desertion. It was built by a wealthy farmer and a botanist named Jose de Canto in honor of his wife after she died. Why does it always have to be about dead spouses? Something about that area, building a massive memorial to a deceased partner, it's really unsettling. Although it was a really magnificent structure, the chapel was built in the neo-Gothic style with stone and brick, stained glass windows, and it was erected right next to a beautiful lake. It was the perfect place for Jose to bury his wife after the chapel was consecrated in 1886. But there were no actual services held inside of the chapel. Instead, Jose used it as a mausoleum where his wife was buried. He then left orders for himself to be entombed beside his wife and for the church to be left alone. Ever since his death in 1898, the Chapel of Our Lady of Victories has been abandoned. It's still standing, but the lack of maintenance is clearly visible. What began as a romantic chapel for a man's dead wife has turned into a spooky and forgotten piece of Gothic architecture next to a serene lake, one of the most alluring and intimidating relics in all of Europe. Number 8. Allentown State Hospital this bizarre building was not a place you wanted to be when it was operational, and certainly not a place you want to visit now that it has been abandoned. It first opened in 1912, and at the time, it was called the Allentown Homopathic Hospital for the Insane. That doesn't really sound like the kind of place anyone would want to spend any amount of time, at least not voluntarily. The Allentown State Hospital closed in December of 2010 after being in operation for 98 years. The buildings here date back to the 1920s, and in 1954, the hospital had over 2,000 patients from the nearby county. That's a lot of crazy people. But it was also around this time that doctors began changing their tune about mental illness, suggesting that many people afflicted by diseases of the mind could still live in the community and be treated at home. And since pulling pieces of people's brains out of their noses and lobotomizing them wasn't really working out as a solution to mental illness, the hospital was slowly emptied and ultimately shut down and abandoned. But it remained abandoned for no more than a decade. The building was supposed to be placed on the National Register of Historic Places, but then the Pennsylvania Department of General Services decided to clear the building to allow a new development, and this was just in 2020. What could have been a spooky, insane asylum haunting teenagers and adventure seekers for generations to come has now been bulldozed to make room for some boring apartment buildings. Do you support the decision to demolish the old buildings? They were historically valuable, but they were also abandoned and creepy, and possibly haunted. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Then, if you're enjoying this video, you should hit the subscribe button to stay connected with American Eye and get more awesome content. Number 7. The Lost Village of Haywood The Lost Village of Haywood in Scotland was once prosperous and full of life. But like many ghost towns, something unexpected came and drained the town of its residents, one by one. It was once a thriving community of miners, but is today a ruin so forgotten that the people who live only 15 miles away don't even know it's there. The community here started in the 1800s, with the population being about 1,200 by the town's peak in 1890. The townsfolk built their homes out of bricks that were produced in a nearby brick factory. Though the factory had long since been torn down, the village developed, roads were installed, more people moved to the town, and they had all the normal amenities of a modern village. Official records show that the village even had a soccer team that was undefeated in local leagues for 11 years. Haywood ended up being a producer of coal, and we all know how that turned out for everyone. 
The coal business began to dry up at the end of the 20th century, and since the area was unsuited for agriculture and there was no other industry, the population began to decline. By 1951, only 15 houses were left. Shortly after, Haywood was completely deserted. A few of the houses still remain today, as well as a small memorial commemorating the handful of inhabitants who died during both the First and Second World War. It was a total ghost town now, like many places in the world that rose and fell with the Industrial Revolution. Do you know of others? Let me know in the comments. Number 6. The Living Hell Prison Croatia has a prison on an island that has been described as a living hell. The prison is just two miles from the coast, once used as a dumping ground for prisoners of war, then for political dissenters. It's called Goli Otok. The misery on the island prison began in 1948, when Cold War tensions in Europe began to rise. Josip Broz Tito, the communist leader of Yugoslavia, separated himself from the Soviet Union and then used Goli Otok as a labor camp. Those who still supported Soviet leadership or spoke positively about Joseph Stalin were sent to prison. According to National Geographic, the prison was active mostly between 1948 and 1955. By the beginning of 1956, over 15,000 people had been sent to the prison island, and at least 600 had been killed or simply allowed to die. The CIA described Goliotok as Devil's Island. It didn't close its doors until the 1980s when the Iron Curtain crumbled. The Soviet Union fell apart and Eastern Europe was finally able to reunite with the rest of the world. But history hasn't been erased here. The walls of the prison are still present, with the island completely deserted and largely ignored by Croatia because of its brutal past. It seems like they want to just brush it under the rug and haven't gotten around to bulldoze the whole place and turning it into something else. Number 5. Ukrainian Churches in the Prairies Imagine an empty, cold flatland with scattered abandoned churches sitting just over the horizon, no matter which way you turn. No, it's not Siberia, it's Canada. From between the fall of 1891 and the summer of 1914, an estimated 170,000 Ukrainians immigrated to Canada from what was the Austro-Hungarian Empire. They moved primarily to the Canadian prairies, a vast landscape comprising three flat and mostly empty provinces of farmland. Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Manitoba. They brought with them their beliefs, with most of them being Greek Orthodox Christians. One of the first churches to be built was St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Manitoba in the year 1897. Then there was another in Alberta, then another, and then another. But through the years, as society progressed, the Greek Orthodox religion fell out of style and many of the churches were abandoned, as some people moved to cities and others stopped practicing their religion. Today, the Canadian prairies are dotted with rotting Ukrainian churches, many of them being of a strange design, mixed with Byzantine and Western styles. There are in fact hundreds of them, with only a handful left functioning. Rural Alberta in particular has dozens of disused Orthodox churches, just waiting until they fall apart completely. Number 4. Turkish Castle Town There's a castle village in Turkey unlike anything you've ever seen, except maybe in a Disney movie. It's something that no one would ever expect to exist in real life. But it's true, and it's totally abandoned. Imagine a strange theme park, but one that didn't quite get finished. The village is literally filled with castles that look like they should be lived in by a king and queen. It's called Burj Al Babas, and it was constructed as a luxury community for foreigners back in 2014. But when the Turkish economy fell into disrepair, the project was stopped. Approximately 530 huge castles were left unfinished and completely empty. The only people interested in the ruined castle village now are tourists. The place is creepy, unbelievably massive and looks like Disney World if it ran out of visitors and was abandoned. Number 3. The Chatterley Whitfield Mine The Chatterley Whitfield Mine is an old, disused coal mine outside of Trent in the United Kingdom. Back in 1937, it was the biggest mine in the area and the first in the UK to produce a million tons of coal in the year. But, like with other mines around the world, its coal production came to a screeching halt in 1977. Just two years later in 1979, the mine was turned into an underground museum, the rundown buildings were renovated, and the rusty old machines were restored to their original condition. But the museum didn't last forever. The issue was that the Chatterley Whitfield mine was connected to the Wollstanton Colliery Pits, and they stopped producing coal in 1981. The pumps were turned off and water levels began to rise, and because the fans inside the Wollstanton Pits were turned off, methane began to build up. There was no way the museum could afford to upkeep of the pits, and so the gas levels became extremely dangerous. Visitors were banned from entering the Chatterley Whitfield mine in 1986 when it became too hazardous. The possibility of an explosion or accidental suffocation was too great. 
It's still abandoned today, only it's been sealed to prevent people from sneaking in. If you tried to enter, you would almost certainly never come out again. Number 2. German U-Boat Bunker There is a U-Boat Bunker in Bremen, Germany, codenamed Valentin. This amazing bunker was used to produce German submarines back in World War II, but has since been abandoned and left a ruin. Bizarrely, not a single U-Boat was actually built here. The problem was that in 1943, the Allied forces had gained air superiority. The Germans were having a very tough time building their own boats and shipyards because the Allies would find out. So, they built the Valentine Bunker to build them in secret. Construction went on from 1943 to 1945, growing to be the biggest freestanding bunker in the whole country. It had 13 assembly bays and the walls and ceilings up to 23 feet thick to protect the workers and assemblies. Unfortunately for the Germans, who used prisoners of war and prisoners of concentration camps to build the bunker, resulting in an estimated 1,750 fatalities, they lost the war before the bunker was finished. It was then left abandoned and is still empty to this very day. And number one, the Olmec Civilization. One of the most interesting abandoned places in all of the Americas goes back to around 1600 BC. It's the ancient settlement of San Lorenzo, capital of the long-forgotten Olmecs, a group of people whose origins still mystify scientists. The name Olmec comes from the Aztec language. It means rubber people. Because of this, archaeologists believe that Olmecs participated in rubber processing. But what's really strange is that archaeologists haven't found a single skeleton of the Olmec person. It's as if they literally disintegrated or all floated away. The Olmecs crafted giant heads, some of them weighing up to 20 tons but nobody knows why they built them, or how, and nobody knows why they abandoned their capital around the year 400 BC. The Olmecs came seemingly from nowhere, constructed a great city in what is now Veracruz, Mexico, and then faded like ghosts, leaving behind their abandoned temples and monuments, and not a single trace of skeletons. Strange, isn't it? Number 10. The Nazi Steamer the Karlsruhe is an old Nazi steamer from World War II that was sunk by Soviet aircrafts in 1945. Today, the mysterious steamer is sitting at the dusty bottom of the Baltic Sea. The devastating attack by Soviet airplanes killed about 1,000 people on board. Just recently, a professional team of divers went down to check on the mysterious vehicle, which they believe may hold remnants of the famous Amber Room. The Amber Room is part of an unsolved mystery from the Great War. The Karlsruhe was built in 1905. Forty years later, she embarked on her last voyage with a team of heavy security and a very important load. Based on historical records, archaeologists believe the ship was carrying treasure from the Amber Room, an impressive space presented to Peter the Great of Russia back in 1716. The room was at Catherine Palace in Pushkin, filled to the brim with an unbelievable amount of incredible treasure. 200 years later in 1941, the Nazis looted the Amber Room. They stole all the goods and then rebuilt the room in Germany for themselves. But when Allied forces advanced in 1943, the Nazis took all the treasure out, put it into crates, and shipped it somewhere else. The treasure has not been found since. The archaeologists were hoping to find traces of the treasure inside the sunken Nazi steamer, though so far, they haven't found anything. Number 9. World War II Desert Plane there is a mysterious abandoned airplane from World War II that crashed in the western desert of Egypt. It happened around 70 years ago. The vehicle is a Royal Air Force Kitty Hawk P-40, and only recently discovered amongst a vast sea of sand and rocks during a mining operation in the desert. It was found pretty much destroyed in a sea of rock and sand, and nobody is really sure how it got there. Captain Paul Collins, the British Embassy's defense attaché, said the airplane probably got lost and ran out of fuel. He believes the pilot responsible for the crash was Flight Sergeant Dennis Copping, who seemed to have made a flawless emergency landing in June of 1942. However, any trace of Captain Copping has yet to be found, suggesting he tried walking out of the desert to safety and was swallowed by the brutal and arid desert sands. He was only 24 years old at the time and in great physical condition, he may have made it quite far before collapsing from exhaustion. His bones are probably a few miles from the aircraft, though it's doubtful anyone will ever find them. Number 8. USS Lexington The wreckage of the aircraft carrier, the USS Lexington, has been found 76 years after it was scuttled in battle. The battle happened about 500 miles from Eastern Australia back in 1942. It was called the Battle of the Coral Sea, 
and there was some serious fighting between the United States forces and Japan. This particular ship was sunk by an American destroyer so that it wouldn't fall into the hands of the enemy. It's considered to be the first battle in history featuring these impressive giant aircraft carriers. Not only that, it is also considered to be the very first air and sea battle ever fought. The Japanese were headed to Papua New Guinea, hoping to gain control of the island and cut off all access to Australia. Allied forces had other plans, however, and intercepted the Japanese, launching airstrikes from carriers when Japan began the invasion. The battle lasted four long days until Japan was finally forced to retreat. The battle was brutal for both sides, though, and the Americans paid a price, too. Yorktown, a U.S. carrier, was heavily damaged. It was struck by torpedoes and bombs, and a fire on board led to raging fires that no one could contain. 2,770 were evacuated that night, and the U.S. made the decision to sink their own carrier so it wouldn't fall into Japanese hands. In total, 216 crew members were killed in the battle. The team that discovered the Lexington did so over the course of about six months. They found some other cool war relics too, like the mysterious Japanese battleship, the Musashi, and the USS Indianapolis. The team also discovered 11 of the original 35 aircraft that were on board the Lexington when it sank. Number seven, the giant K-7 bomber. The Russian K-7 bomber was a very peculiar aircraft built by the Soviet Union. It had its first flight only three decades after the Wright brothers broke the barrier between Earth and sky. The year was 1933, and the Russians were hoping to use the K-7 as a heavy bomber and gunship, since it was equipped with both. It was an unusual construction. It had mounted machine guns and the capacity to drop bombs. The designer was even a veteran pilot of World War I named Konstantin Kalinin. He designed the aircraft to have a massive wingspan, so big that even by today's standards, it was a giant. The wingspan was over 150 feet, even greater than a modern B-52 bomber. It also had eight engines to carry its massive weight. The K-17 bomber ended up being a little too big though. During its maiden flight, it showed a concerning amount of instability. Its construction was solid, but there were just too many engines and it was just too large. The frame of the vehicle shook dangerously because of all the engines vibrating. By the 11th time it took to the sky, it was completely toast. The aircraft experienced massive structural failure and crashed, killing 14 men on board and one guy on the ground. Do you think if we tried to build a plane like this today, it would be successful? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number six, the Vestikod. The Vestikod is yet another bizarre piece of Soviet military history. The vehicle was meant to be a highly advanced tank, the first ever built, but it was never actually made. The inventor of this gorgeous machine never got past a pre-production model. If he had, he may have changed the face of warfare. The inventor was Alexander Perokovshikov. In 1914, he wanted to create a cross-country tank the idea was for the welded skeleton of the tank to run on a single caterpillar track made of rubberized fabric. The track was stretched over four drums with two small wheels on the sides controlled by the steering wheel. The weirdest part was how it looked. It had all the trademarks of a modern tank but was extremely small and narrow. It was also a total failure in 1915 when the pre-production model went on its first road trip. It didn't perform like the inventor promised it would and the funding was taken away. It wasn't until around 1941 that Russia began spreading nationalist propaganda that the Vestikod was the first tank ever built, designed by a Russian. The details of the history of the Vestikod can be found in Leodid Fedoseyev's book, Tanks of the First World War. Number five, the German ball tank. The German ball tank, also known as the Kugelpanzer, was designed by Germany in World War II as a one-man wrecking ball Nobody knows exactly who invented the tank or how many were built, as historical records only show a single vehicle that was exported to Japan sometime in 1945. The vehicle is still a total mystery because there are no official records of its invention, and to this day, there's only one surviving model. It's currently stationed at the Kubinka Tank Museum near Moscow. It was captured by the Soviets and kept as an oddity. Today, it's known simply as Exhibit Number 37. 
Nobody knows if it was ever used in combat or why it was built in the first place. Here's what it looks like. A ball. An armored ball. It was probably meant to be a light reconnaissance vehicle that could be manned by a single person. It used a single cylinder engine and had armor about five millimeters thick. It also had a single viewing slot that the driver could use to see where he was going. It was almost like a portable bunker for a single person, though it was obviously not that useful since it never went into mass production and nobody even knows where the thing was built. Number four, the Fokker Volp Triebflüge. The Fokker Volp Triebflüge was a VTOL flight interceptor designed in the mid 1940s. This was at the very end of the war. The Germans were extremely desperate to try and build something far superior to the enemy's aircrafts. Turbojet technology was all the range, and they wanted to create something that could take off vertically and land the same way. Thus, the Triebflüge, which translates roughly to the Thrust Wing Hunter, was born. It was basically a rocket ship designed to intercept the legions of Allied bombers, inching closer to Berlin. Here's how the VTOL would have worked if it ever got off the ground. It had a single seat in the cockpit for one pilot directly under the nose. It had three wings sitting around the fuselage in the middle of the ship and oversized propeller blades with jets attached to their tips. This would have enabled vertical lift and forward flight. However, like so many of the mysterious vehicles designed during wartime, this one never saw the light of day. The war was already ending and the process of getting the machine built and tested was just too much. The futuristic design was never seen all the way through. And just as the wind tunnel testing was being completed, the facility was taken over by the Allies. Number three, pigeon rockets. In 1943, America was desperately searching for a way to bomb its targets in Nazi Germany. Inventor B.F. Skinner came up with a very bizarre vehicle for doing so. And yes, it involved pigeons and rockets. According to Peggy Kidwell with the American History Museum, military officials were desperate to figure out how they could aim rockets accurately. Skinner approached the Defense Committee with his plan, codenamed Project Pigeon. They then granted Skinner a small budget of $25,000 to get his project off the ground. The vehicle Skinner invented was fitted with a missile and three tiny cockpits to hold pigeons. In front of each pigeon was a small electronic screen that showed an image of the ground directly in front of the rocket. The street pigeons were to be trained to recognize a specific target and then peck at the launch button when they saw the target on the screen. When all three pigeons pecked their buttons at the same time, the missile could be fired accurately at the target. It seemed like the perfect missile carrier, but it didn't work. Well, it did and it didn't. There was a successful demonstration using trained pigeons, but the military officials thought it was a quack idea and shut down the project immediately. Skinner himself went on to become one of the most influential psychologists in the country. Number two, Object 279. Object 279 was an experimental tank designed by the Soviets in the 1950s. It was a unique vehicle that used four sets of treads instead of the usual two. It also had an extremely long cannon that it could use to blast apart just about anything in its way. The first prototype was born in 1957 in Leningrad, a vehicle that weighed 60 tons and whose primary function was to break through fortified enemy lines. It could also operate in extremely rugged terrain where lighter tanks failed. She had a 133 millimeter cannon, infrared sights, a radar rangefinder, and armored protection in the front that was 11 inches thick. This is huge in comparison to the American M60 tank with its measly six inches of armor. Fortunately for everyone, politics in the 1950s saw the end of Object 279. The Russians realized that if there ever was another world war, it would not be using heavy tanks and instead would be fought with nuclear bombs and advanced weaponry. The battlefield would be much different. And so they saw no need to build any more heavy tanks. Only one Object 279 was ever built. They were right, as a lot of battles today are fought from behind a computer screen. Today, Object 279 is sitting at a tank museum in Russia. And number one, government UFOs. According to astrophysicist Eric Davis, a man who consulted the Pentagon on their UFO program years ago and who currently works for the defense contractor Aerospace Corporation, witness certain materials that likely came from outer space. At least, this is what Eric told the Times. 
He claimed the Department of Defense has collected materials from vehicles off-world, meaning they were not created by humans on Earth. However, he was not able to specify what these materials were being used for or if the government was able to utilize them in such a way to create weapons or advanced vehicles. We also don't know if his claims are even true, but if what he's saying is real, it means the government has been collecting crashed UFOs and may be putting the technology to use in the weapons department. What that means for the future of warfare is anybody's guess. But also, if he is telling the truth, do you really think the government has UFOs? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 10. Croatian Women's Prison Camp Sveti Gregor was once a women's penitentiary camp in Croatia, but has since been completely forgotten. It is now an old and abandoned ruin on an uninhabited island. Back in the day, when Yugoslavia was still a place in the 1940s, the prison was used to hold opponents of the Communist Party. The island is about 2.6 square miles. The island is located in the Adriatic Sea between the islands of Goliotok, Kirk, and Rab. On medieval maps, it used to be called Arta. Its current name translates as St. Grigor. Before the penitentiary was built, there was a small village where people hunted deer. The village was quiet and peaceful. Then the land was a scary and terrified prison. And today, the atmosphere is more than a little creepy. The Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was not kind to those who didn't follow the rules. And between 1948 and 1953, it's hard to imagine the horrors that went on in this prison. It was actually the female prisoners who were forced to construct the buildings that would ultimately hold them. But the brutality didn't end at forced labor. According to historical records, the prisoners were treated horribly, degraded in every possible way, and even forced to beat one another in front of the guards for their entertainment. After the fall of the Soviet Union, Sveti Gregor closed in 1986 and was subsequently abandoned. The old buildings are still on the island today, but nobody lives there. Number 9 the abandoned nuclear plant. The Santa Maria de Corona nuclear power plant was inaugurated in 1970 and today is an ugly, abandoned ruin. The plant was inaugurated by the Spanish dictator, Francisco Franco, with the technology to build the power plant gained by the American company, General Electric. At the time, Corona was the biggest nuclear power plant of its kind anywhere on the European continent. But back in the 1980s, Greenpeace began to protest the nuclear power plant, with protests burned by the accident in Harrisburg in 1979. The campaign to close down the nuclear plant actually went on until just recently, when in 2012, a year after the disaster at Fukushima, the plant was finally closed down. Regulations for the active maintenance of the power plant make it necessary to carry out regular drills in case of a nuclear accident. The towns in the surrounding areas meet and plan evacuation points for this type of incident, and even have a decontamination protocol. Today, the plant is a scary ruin filled with old, rusting technology. The plant is closed to the public, but hasn't been disassembled, so the huge pieces of hardware are still there. You're not allowed to visit though, as the place is basically condemned and extremely dangerous. Number eight, Russian chemical plant. There's an abandoned Russian chemical plant that, according to Business Insider, could set off a catastrophic environmental disaster like the one that took place at Chernobyl. Rosprioznadzor, Russia's environmental agency, monitors actions that may have a negative impact on the environment. The head of Russia's environmental safety agency, Svetlana Radianova, has said recently that the chemical plant is filled with mercury and unknown chemicals, and it has simply been left to rot in rural Siberia. It's called the Usoya Kimprom plant, and it once manufactured chlorine and other chemicals. The facility first opened in 1933 in the Irkutska region. It covers an area of about 1,500 acres. The only reason the plant shut down is that it went bankrupt in 2017. Nearby the plant is a town with about 80,000 people in it, but nobody goes near the chemical factory. One, because it's creepy and scary. Two, because the chemicals inside the plant specifically the high levels of mercury, can damage a person's kidneys and their nervous system. These substances have even been known to cause tumors to grow in rats. Scientists are still investigating the possible links between pesticides and disease in people, with some studies indicating that high levels of exposure to certain pesticides may raise one's risk of cancers like leukemia. To sum things up, this is not the kind of abandoned place you want to be urban exploring. Number seven, the Essex County Isolation Hospital. The Essex County Isolation Hospital was crafted near the city of Newark. 
It was built with the purpose of caring for those afflicted by infectious diseases. There were already psychiatric hospitals and tuberculosis sanatoriums in the region, but there was nothing designed to isolate people who were highly infectious. The city of Newark purchased the land in 1896 and began to build various structures to house the ill patients, as well as buildings for the hospital staff, such as a theater and a laundry service. They built a little community, and seeing as this was back over a hundred years ago, the hospital also had a few acres of farmland. Disaster struck in 1917 though, when a cold snap caused the heating and lighting to break, and 24 people died and 32 people got frostbite. By the middle of the 1920s, the hospital was no longer really needed, and so it was transformed into a general hospital instead of an isolation hospital. But then over time, the hospital became more and more crowded. New mental illness treatment facilities appeared, and eventually, the hospital was too outdated to even be useful. It closed its doors in 2007 and was left abandoned for the next 10 years. Until 2017, demolition crews came in and began to knock parts of the hospital down. Though even today, some of the abandoned wings remain. Do you think the Excess County Isolation Hospital is haunted? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 6. Dinosaur World Dinosaur World is one of the most bizarre and freaky abandoned places anywhere in Arkansas. It was a tourist attraction in the town of Beaver, covering 65 acres and including hundreds of giant sculptures of dinosaurs, prehistoric monsters, and of course, cavemen. It also boasted the largest mural of Noah's Ark anywhere in the world. When it closed in 2005, it was the largest dinosaur park on the planet. Its history goes back to 1967, when Emmett Sullivan crafted almost a dozen replicas of dinosaurs. Then in the 1970s, the park was sold and a 40-foot tall statue of King Kong was built. Throughout the years, more and more statues were built and more and more people came to visit. But by the early 2000s, interesting dinosaurs had basically disappeared and nobody cared about the park anymore. They were forced to close, and within just one year, the whole park was overgrown by nature. It really did look like something out of a lost, prehistoric world. Nobody did anything to the place. It was just left alone, and in August of 2011, a fire ran through the park and destroyed the main building. Today, it's a creepy, half-burned ruin filled with bug-eyed dinosaur statues. Number 5. Pripyat Town Pripyat Town in Ukraine is one of the scariest ghost towns anywhere in the world. It was left abandoned after the nuclear disaster at a nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The nuclear disaster happened on April 26, 1986, and every last citizen of Pripyat was forced to leave everything they owned behind and evacuate immediately, lest they turn into mutated monsters. About 30 people died in the explosion, and a few thousand died because of cancer from being exposed to the dangerous radiation. Pripyat itself was the closest town to the reactor, with a population of about 49,000 strong. It was built in the 1970s strictly to house the people working at Chernobyl. There are 15 schools, a huge hospital, 25 stores, a handful of gyms, and even cinemas and an amusement park. It was a luxury in the Soviet Union, but in just three short hours, it was a ghost town. The absence of humans have been excellent for wildlife, though. In 1986, wildlife was not doing well in Chernobyl. There were too many people in farms. After everyone left, the deer and boar population returned, and despite the high radiation levels, they were not showing any obvious signs of mutations, though apparently the plants turned strange, with some reports that some were glowing. The animal populations grew enormously. Today, the animal populations more closely resemble that of a national park than a radioactive contaminant zone. As it turns out, animals prefer a nuclear disaster over normal human habitation. All these decades later, Pripyat is still abandoned and lifeless. The only way in is through a guided tour, and much of the place is still plagued by radiation. There are gas masks everywhere, broken dolls scattered throughout empty houses, and it wouldn't be much good for anything other than maybe the set of a horror movie. Number 4. Dorison Station Dorison Station in South Korea is less than a mile from the boundary of the DMZ, the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. It's a modern train station that was completed in 2002. For a brief time, freight trains traveled from the northern side of the border into Dorison. That was back when relations between North and South Korea were a little stronger. But then when tensions flared once more, the station was shut down and it has been abandoned ever since. Today, the station sits completely empty and unused, with signs inside the terminal pointing passengers to board trains in Pyongyang, trains that will never come. 
It was more a symbol of hope than anything, and the fact that it's abandoned today leaves a lot of people in both North and South Korea feeling pretty hopeless. The emptiness of the station itself makes the place scary, and it's a grim reminder of the division of the Korean Peninsula and the violence that can erupt at any moment. This is not a place you want to be caught inside of, as it's way too close to the danger of the DMZ and the watchful North Korean soldiers. Number 3. Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum There is nowhere quite as scary as an abandoned lunatic asylum, and the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum may just be the scariest. It was once a psychiatric hospital operated by the state of West Virginia. It was operational from between 1864 and 1994. It was designed in the beautiful Gothic revival style by an architect from Baltimore. This makes the asylum just that much creepier. It was designed to hold 250 people at maximum, but like most of the institutions in America by the 1950s, it was horribly overburdened with at least 2,400 patients. Because of the overcrowding, there was a huge issue with sickness, people literally being locked inside of cages, and the state ordering a ridiculous number of lobotomies to reduce the patient population. They thought that if they could simply pull out pieces of people's brains, they could ship them back home and call them cured. In 1994, the asylum was forced to close. Ever since, the building and the large grounds which it sits upon have been abandoned. There have been occasional events, such as fairs and church gatherings. In 1999, there was significant damage when the county police officers decided to play a game of paintball inside. Now, it's an abandoned museum where you can go on a tour and look for the ghosts of the mentally deranged. Are you brave enough to go? Number 2. Mandu, Ancient City In India, Mandu is an abandoned ruin that will give you nightmares. It comes from the Mughal area and has been abandoned and in disrepair for at least 400 years, according to the Huffington Post. Back when India was a Muslim nation, Mandu was the capital. It was a bustling fortress town, filled with tombs, palaces, mosques, and impressive monuments. Today, though, it's a little freaky. The Hoshang Tomb is the oldest marble building in all of India, while the Rupmati Pavilion overlooks a cliff with a sheer drop 1,000 feet to the deadly rocks below. This is an abandoned oasis that almost no one visits, and for good reason. It's often covered in an eerie fog. Some say it's filled with ghosts, and the atmosphere is so ghoulish that most of the locals avoid the place at all costs, as if it's the ruin of some evil necromancer's palace. And number one, the Sogenji Temple. The Sogenji Temple in Japan is one of the creepiest abandoned places ever. The temple has a shrine to Japanese water goblins, known as Kappa. In Japanese folklore, these aquatic goblins are known for kidnapping children when they walk over bridges and pulling them down into the muck below. The Kappa is a turtle-like monster with a bowl on its head that it must keep filled with water in order to stay alive. There are all kinds of weird myths surrounding these goblins, and the Sogenji Temple in Tokyo is where they've been immortalized in tons of little statues. The temple was built in the 17th century and abandoned sometime after that. Historians aren't exactly sure when, but even though the weird temple is abandoned, some people continue to show up and leave behind offerings of cucumbers, which is the Kappa's favorite food. There's a treasure chamber hidden inside the temple, which contains drawings of little goblins on old scrolls, and even what legend says is the mummified arm of a real, physical Kappa monster. Thanks for watching. Would you dare visit any of these creepy places? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more. See you next time.